This NBA Picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Get started today and you'll get a risk-free bet up to $500. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details at wynnbet.com and download the app today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive up to $500 in bonus cash. That's PropSwap.com, promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by Coors Light. When you're sweating out your bets, make sure to grab a mountain cold refreshment. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's literally made to chill we're also brought to you by the sgpn app the nba finals free roll contest locks at the end of the week so make sure to get your entry in for a free shot at winning one thousand dollars just enter sgpn in the app store or google play store who welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast i'm sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks ryan real money kramer what's happening Kramer dog oh wow what's happening well The soap opera continues, Sean. (laughs) If you could just play a little of that music for me. Sure. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our league. It's it's so it's so elegant. Yeah, I mean, I I, honestly, this is uh, forever. I've I've kind of been in Camp Harden. (laughs) I've said he's a good player. He's a physical player. He, he, so what? He doesn't play defense. He can get it done until this playoffs. This Bucks net series, the last two games, has turned into a rec league show. It looks, honestly, I'm not kidding. I've seen better rec league games. Some of the passes, some of the flailing. <laughs> oh, and I grazed into me. I might as well have gotten shot in the fucking face. It, it's out. It can, Blake Griffin is flying all over the place, flopping like a fish. I, I know I'm getting older. So I am very aware that I don't want to sound like an old guy. But the um, we always, as Americans, have made fun of soccer players. Yes. I, 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 we have to look in the mirror. If, NBA, <laughs> if the NBA is going to be one of America's pastimes, maybe we need to tone down the soccer hate. Because I'm watching the Euros, and I'm watching the NBA playoffs, <laughs> and I'm seeing a lot of the same shit. Well, Ryan, let's be honest. America's real passion... <laughs> is betting on sports and you can do that over at winbet.com w-y-n-n bet.com you uh yeah head over to winbet.com download the app today and you got a special offer up to five hundred dollars in a risk-free sports bet that's right up to five hundred dollars completely free uh, for a risk-free sports bet. Terms and conditions apply. They got it all. Generous promos, odds, and parlays. They're all happening right now at one place. W-Y-N-N bets. Head there if you want to. W-I-N-B-I-G, baby. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and games. Win bet. W-Y-N-N bet.com. I need some like some drumsticks to get into this a little bit more. I just like it's there's I'm not even a drummer, but that just that song fucks. It it does. It is certainly dominant. All right, Kramer, we're gonna talk NBA playoff picks. Joining us on the line, one of the co-hosts of the NBA Gambling Podcast, Moonoff Manji, aka the Machine. What's up, Moonoff? Going on, guys. I see you guys have a little tan there from the. Uh the heat there in vegas oh i appreciate that i am italian of course i I do i do get that nice olive skin sean i I don't know sean's more just trying to avoid the uh the inevitable right anytime i get color it's a it's a bad thing on this super uh pale skin of mine but yeah we we, it was uh i mean we were talking to moon off before the show started just yeah legit 115 We were trying to do the show with laptops, with phones, and then immediately the heat just shut it down. We had to just go, uh, you know, bare knuckle style, Ryan, do an entire podcast. No notes, no problem. It was awesome. And by the way, I mean, shout out to to Dom, by the way. Social media, Dom, just fire all the time. He he complimented. I don't know if you heard this, but he was like, ah, I was impressed. You guys literally had nothing in front of you. It was hot as shit. Doesn't matter content machines and by the way if you are watching on youtube if you're watching on uh, twitch on facebook wherever you could be watching this uh shout out to you but also you're going to be in for a treat uh some video 
on the horizon. You can oh, see yeah. Moon off now and his beautiful beard. It is. It is an <laughs> impressive beard. I don't know about the Red Sox uh, garb that's uh, <laughs> slightly in frame, but I'll have to cut that I out. I hear you all the way down there, Yankee fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll have to blur that uh, out. Moon off for, for people not in the know, what do you, I mean, you have this giant man sized beard. What do you got to do? Yeah. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you got to do maintenance wise to keep that thing up? I mean, some trimming sure. at some point or what, what's the, what's the routine? Yeah. So I'll give you a background story on how I kind of, uh, came into fruition with the beard. So I've always like been clean shaven up until about six months before my wedding. And the reason I grew it out was it, I was like, well, it was the NBA playoffs were starting and the Rockets obviously had made the playoffs <laughs> that year. I was like, I'm going to let this thing grow out until the Rockets get eliminated. Lo and behold, I think the Rockets made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals that year. And the beard kind of grew out. I mean, I'm a brown guy, so the, the hair grows pretty fast. <laughs> um, so long story short, I was like, well, this looks pretty good. So I'm just going to hang on to this. And ever since then, I, I've had a beard. But um, you know, I put, I, it's, it's tough because when you have a big beard, like I do, you know, with showering and everything, you, you have to, uh, you know, wash it with the beard wash. And then <laughs> I, I shout out to my wife, man. She just does an incredible job of helping me, uh, groom it and, and blow dry it. And then, uh, I put some oil and, uh, Jesus. some, uh, moisturizer in it to make it, you know, look the way it does. Looks like a, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a part-time job. I, I, I will beard. say. Yeah, the biggest thing you got to do is see. For me, it's just I'm, I think it sounds a little bit like Moon Off. You realize like why would I ever put a razor to my face again? <laughs> this is way easier. Uh, but I will say you do have to get effective at trimming the mustache out of the mouth because yeah. there's nothing worse when you're eating oh, than get just a getting little, a, yeah. getting a mouthful of your own hair. It's really it's just anyway not appetizing at all. Um, <laughs> uh, well, let's yeah, get I into. Don't trust, oh, I don't sorry. Trust what were you myself, saying? Uh, Trimming my beard, so I have a barber that I go oh, to every uh, ooh, boss. two to three months that takes care of it for me. Boss oh. mode. That I mean, is that is boss mode. Maybe that's Harden's problem. He's got a <laughs> mouthful of his own fucking beard. All right, let's talk. Let's let's talk about actionable betting information, Sean. Sixers at Hawks. Oh man, this is Sixers are laying three minus one fifty five on the money line. Hawks plus one thirty. Total sitting at two twenty one. How can they make the Sixers? favorites after the back-to-back just 20 point collapses I mean it's just when I was watching that second game this is what happens when you build a franchise on trusting a process and tanking it's just this loser mentality is ingrained into the team and you can't cleanse yourself I, it, it, I mean, social media, there were people putting up, like, have you seen me missing uh, <laughs> signs in the streets of Philadelphia? The issue was they had two separate jokes, one with Ben Simmons, one with Tobias Harris. That's how bad this team was. In the second half of the game, Embiid and Seth Curry were the only two Sixers who hit shots, and he, Embiid was three for nine. He wasn't even, like, good in the second half. I mean, Ben Simmons – it's insane. I mean, you, it feels like the guy's a bust, but you can't call him a bust cause he's not horrible, but he's just, I, I can't remember a guy who is so talented, so pretty good at basketball, but then has such gaping holes and just overall the team, just a tremendous lack of mental toughness. I don't even know who to blame for this collapse. I mean, I, obviously you got to throw Simmons in there. Yes. Doc deserves plenty of blame. Yes. And he's, you look at his resume of just, Two nothing uh, series collapsed. Two one ki- collapses. Three one collapses. Um, it, it's just insane. And if the Hawks were playing really well, I would give it up to them. But they, it, to me, it just seems like in the second half, the Sixers' butthole just gets so tight, and they they, they don't know what to do. And they're like, ah. And even Embiid, whose whose numbers have been good and has played pretty well these past couple games. He has still come up short so much in the yeah. second half, and it, it feels like a mental thing. Ah, oh, man. That being said, oh Sean, no, give me the Sixers. <laughs> <laughs> Just cause I, uh, I don't know. Lower I, moment uh, when they lose the third straight game after holding a twenty point lead. 
or having to watch Nate Sudfeld play meaningful oh, football. Oh, come on. That was uh, he was part of the process that got us Devonta Smith. And Loser Nate Sud- culture. Nate Loser Sudfeld culture. signed by Kyle Shanahan who by all accounts is a genius. So <laughs> Uh, Nate, Nate is going to be doing big things in the Bay area. Moon off one. What do you make of the Sixers team? And uh, why are they favored? Are, are you taking the Hawks? Yeah, I think kind of going back to games four and five, you, you hit the nail on the head that the second half has pretty much been the story on why the Sixers have not been able to close out the games. I mean, they've had significant leads both in games four and five. If we go back to game five, I think they had a 26 point lead and they just collapsed. Game four, they were outscored 54 to 38. Game Jesus. five, they were outscored 69 to 44. Like I said, they were up 26 points. And like you mentioned, Seth Curry and Embiid were the only ones to make baskets. Yes. <laughs> and then in game five, I think like the final six and a half minutes, they only scored like six, four or six points or something like They're that. They're at home. So, yeah. And, you know, I mean, like you said, who do you blame for that? Is it, I, I can't. I don't think you can put the blame on Embiid because he was having an absolutely fantastic first half. He got him that lead. I think they were up 22 at the half, but you need somebody else to step up. You take a look at the game five box score, Tobias Harris, two of 11, only four points. Seth Curry did his part. Joel Embiid did his part. And like you said, Ben Simmons, it's a jump shooting league. You got to make shots. And it, and again, they went to the hack of Simmons. It worked for them. They crawled their way back into the game. Um, but now it's ball to the wall time for the Sixers. I'll reluctantly take the Sixers oh. minus the three. I think this is going to be another game seven in the semifinals for the uh, second round. Or, yeah, sorry, the second round of the Eastern Conference Finals. Or, sorry, second round. Uh, we'll have two game sevens. Uh, I have faith that Tobias Harris will bounce back. Embiid will have a good game. And some way, somehow, Ben Simmons will be some type of contributing factor for this uh Sixers team. I, I don't mean, know he how. was almost, I, he was almost defensive player of the year. So to call him a bust yeah. feels crazy, right? But certainly, what what do you call uh, a guy like Ben Simmons? Here's my concern. My my concern is that I'm I'm mad at myself. I've always been a big Nate McMillan fan. I always feel like he's getting fucked. But all I am, all I hear from you is about the Sixers, and I let myself buy in. They're going to take care of business. There is not a team. I would rather fade in a back against the wall situation on the road than this Sixers team. McMillan greater than Doc, and that's been mm. the story, right? The second half comebacks have been about adjustments. Where are the adjustments? I'm so from? mad. I love McMillan in Seattle, Portland. <laughs> he's just a good coach for whatever reason. He's always been capped out as being a first or second round and out, and then he loses the job because he can't reach championship potential. But this season is turning into a weird season where he is by far the best coach left in this in the Eastern Conference. By a, I, I like Steve Nash, but by a mile, Nate McMillan, I would take in a coaching... Uh, coach Bud? Come on. <laughs> that I mean, don't even get me started in the coaching right. in the Nets-Bucks game. But what? here's what I'll say. I yes. think it's hard, it's hard for you to sell me a narrative where Ben Simmons is going to step it up when he's never stepped it up in his fucking career. So this is the game I look to the adjusted line, and Ooh. I'm shocked right now. They are fucking with the juice a little bit because you're flipping it around zero, but... Uh, you know, it's been good to me taking it to the two to one point. So let's take it to the two to one point Hawks minus four and a half. They close it out. Dude. Hope is a huge thing. Hope is a big deal in sports. And when you come back multiple times, like they have, they will feel like they are in the game the entire time. And they know they want to step and keep the foot on the throat. I would be very concerned that this turns into a blowout in an ugly way for Doc and the Sixers to end what was a really good season. How was that? Fucking dominated. Ryan, you mentioned uh, Hawks, Hawks, Bucks, Utah, and another small market in the in the C- Conference Finals. Conspiracy theory: The NBA no. could use another Game Seven with a major market. The Sixers just saying that. Also, sidebar: Have we ever seen Coach Bud? and Alex Jones in the same place at the same time. Google those two guys. They look, they have a very similar yeah, look. It would explain the play on the court. That, <laughs> that's for sure. Oh God. They, the Sixers for Christ's sake, just figure this out. All right. We're going to talk jazz and Clippers, but of course, shouting out Coors Light. I, I think 
that's why I was so steamed on this last game is that I didn't have access to Coors Light at the time. We were coming mm, back from Vegas. You did need to drive in. I, I needed to chill. I was desperately looking for a reset button. Had to wait till I got home. The game was over. And, you know, I was able to uh, relax, unwind, crack open a nice cold Coors Light. <laughs> Again, I mean, if you're, it feels like most of America right now in a heat wave. And if you're in a heat wave and you have access to a Rocky Mountain refreshment, AKA the Coors Light, yep. what are you doing drinking anything else? Coors Light, it's cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. Literally made to chill. Cannot state that enough. Coors Light, it's the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit the reset button, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And as always, celebrate responsibly. I was amazed at how quickly the mountains turned away from blue in the Vegas heat. Oh, man. As soon as that 115, <laughs> it was. And we had a bucket of them in ice, but even that was. The, the ice lasted maybe two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, two minutes. Well, if the, if the Utah Jazz pull off this series, they're going to be celebrating responsibly. Utah Jazz lane one as they go back to L.A. to face the Clippers. Uh, pretty even on the money line here. 219 is the total. The Utah Jazz, a road favorite. Kind of uh, this series obviously has been all over the place. Of course, Kawhi, uh, you know, they had that nice win and then up. Oh, Nope, here he goes. He's got an ACL injury, or at least they said knee sprain at first, but now they're thinking ACL. It, it clearly probably wasn't a complete tear because that that injury news would already be out there. Maybe he's dealing with a small, a small minor thing, you know. Now, that, but I mean, they got a great game, and uh, you know, he's I, done. He's out for the playoffs. I, I think so. Inside inside sources, and I wish I wish we were on air to talk about it because I would have been all over. Uh, the Clippers last game because that's the classic move, right? Where your big star goes out and all these other guys, Paul George, Marcus Morris, Reggie Jackson, they, you know, they fill in for Kawhi. They stepped up and they did. They had a great game. Uh, You know, I think they all had over uh, 20 points, really, really took care of business. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling okay about Clippers plus 130, but now this is kind of scary because now the Clippers go back home, which for whatever reason they've been way worse at, and now you got a motivated Jazz team in a closeout game. Moon off. I'm going back and forth on this. I'll let you start with this one. Are you taking Utah Jazz as the road favorites or are you Clippers home dog? What are you leaning here? I think the mentality for the Clippers is we got to finish this at home. We yep. don't want to go yeah. into Utah – game seven in their arena where it's probably one of the best home court advantages. So um, you go take a look at, you know, game uh, five, their starters really stepped up in the absence of Kawhi Leonard after Paul George. I mean, Marcus Morris had 25 points, Reggie Jackson, 22, four of their five starters uh, hit at all hit at least three, three point shots. So um I'm going to think, I, I think conspiracy theory, we need an LA team in the Western yeah. conference finals. <laughs> Um, I think Clippers get it done in game six at home. Uh, give me the point with the Clippers. Give me the money line with the Clippers. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I was going back and forth, but I, I think moon off. They haven't kinda, lost kinda laid out this a, series. No, you're right. And, and maybe it was just something weird going on with the Mavs and Ryan in the same way that the Sixers, their confidence probably rattled as they go on the road. And I know I picked them, but, uh, <laughs> I, I think, I think the jazz, it has to be in the back of their head that, Wow, Kawhi Leonard went out. We have a great opportunity to get a get a win, and but now it's the, it's the opposite of we can't even beat this team when they don't have Kawhi. Now you go on the road, and the Jazz have struggled in this series shooting on the road and getting points. Where are you at, Kramer? Uh, I I actually think for whatever reason, um, you know, like you said, the team rallied, and I I don't know if this is that like you can use the same like football deal where it's like that one game get up. Because they saw it worked, and I think you know you touched on the the mental angle, but the ment- what Utah losing at home without Kawhi like that, I I think sure maybe they they bounce back, and again maybe this is a team that you're okay taking back against the wall on the road against a very motivated Clippers team that has some grown ass men. You know this is a team full of grown ass men who understand what's on the line. I I just. Moonoff nailed it. They have to ensure that the Clippers take care of business. The refs will be involved in this one. 
Uh, I'm not going to take an adjusted spread, but I do think the Clippers win, advance, and at least secure the NBA uh, one media market because mm. uh, Phoenix, L.A., uh, Milwaukee, and Phoenix, Atlanta. Phoenix, L.A. is a good series. I, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm just saying, like, we're talking about not, not the hugest television market. I mean, what would the NBA rather, Milwaukee, Atlanta, or Philly, Brooklyn? Well, <laughs> Kevin Durant greater than Trey Young. That well, we're Kevin we, Durant greater than everybody. We might we might uh, figure that out, and, and of course, KD has stepped up. I threw out not to toot my own horn. Well, I'm going to toot my own horn. I threw out Kevin Durant triple double that came through in a big way. I said legacy game back against the wall. They started out horrific. I was hanging out at the stadium swim cabana, just losing my mind yeah. in a cabana, which it's hard to be a, in a bad mood in a cabana, but somehow the nets made me in a bad mood because that first half against Milwaukee was just horrific with the turnovers, with just the insanely sloppy rec league play. Yep. And we saw some of that, uh, you know, in the second half of this game, we just watch and really to me, the key and uh, you know, I, the, the stat they threw out on Scott Van Pelt. Giannis didn't attempt a three, and you saw that in this game. I mean, not only that he didn't attempt a three, you but you heard his, me screaming at the TV during but, this game. But his just the way he played wasn't a you know a hey I'm a, you know I'm uh, I'm dirt uh, you know thinking that he's something he isn't. He he played like Shaq. He's a guy who just get a full head of steam, lower your head, get to the rim, and finish at the rim. Like that's what you're good at. You're really good at that. A uh, couple of interesting notes here. Coach Bud's team, he has never won a series when they faced an elimination game. Mm. That's an interesting stat. A as much as I kind of liked what I saw at Milwaukee and the game plan of Giannis not attempting threes, I, I just can't take this Bucks team on the road. Middleton is not the same player on the road, and a bunch of these role players have struggled on the road. I I'm going to take the Nets here again. KD back against the wall, and maybe we we started to get a little something out of out of James Harden here. Maybe get a little bit more. Uh, Joe Harris, I think, at home, you know, is going to be better from behind the arc. Moonoff, you are the beard whisperer himself. What can we expect out of uh, Harden here? Again, yeah. dealing with the hamstring. I don't have to play the sure. sound again, but uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's dealing with some issues. What do you, what do you expect to Harden? What do you expect to the Nets here in a game seven? Yeah, um, if you look at tonight, offensively, Harden was a lot better. He made three out of his six three-point shots. He scored 16 points, better than what he had. I mean, he was shaking off that rust in Game 5, but just having him on the floor, like Kevin Durant said at the end of Game 5, was huge for them just to have another ball handler. Um, it almost seemed like that the Nets were – they were pretty much in this game up until that, I think, 14-0 run the Bucks had in the fourth quarter. Um and it almost seemed like, you know, these guys kind of knew that it was going to go back to a game seven in uh, in Brooklyn. But uh, last thing I did hear that the strippers are on the way to Brooklyn right now. From, uh, <laughs> oh, Harden's help out with the groin. Favorite, yeah, uh, Harden's call. favorite trip club down here. <laughs> so uh, expect expect the motivated uh, effort from James Harden in, on, on uh, what Saturday night. So it sounds like he's you're... getting delivery strippers. <laughs> yeah. Do they have that on uh, Instacart and Drizzly? Uh, <laughs> little adult services there. Now, now moon off. It sounds like yeah. you're, you're, you're on nets getting the point. Yeah. Any thought on the game flow overall? Of course the, uh, the one, I think the over has only hit one game and, and that may yeah. have been the one that Kramer bet on. By a fucking and they, point. <laughs> if you want to listen <laughs> You, you may have, uh, if you listen to the U.S. Open uh, podcast with the Golf Gambling guys, that was a really fun episode. But you hear Kramer reacting to the uh, <laughs> the under getting crushed by like a point there. Oh my what God. do you think? What do you think game flow wise? Are we expecting uh, yeah. a decent scoring game? I, I'm still just to me, this is just a fade of the Bucks scoring on the road. And, and I think they're really yeah. going to struggle. Yeah, the intensity really goes up in game seven, right? Especially defensively. And I think historically, game sevens tend to go under. I still don't see a reason why these teams are going to start magically shooting better in game seven. Uh, I think the, like I said, the defensive intensity is going to be better. And Sean, like you just said that Milwaukee has not been that great on the road shooting the basketball. Um, and then another tidbit is that the Brooklyn Nets haven't lost a home game 
at all in these playoffs. So that's something that the Brooklyn Nets have working for them. And like you just mentioned, Coach Bud hasn't won a elimination game. I believe what you say, game seven that they haven't won. He so. hasn't won a series where he faced an elimination game. Yeah. So that, that and I think that's all we need to know, right? Um <laughs> So, you know, I think we might see another godly effort out of Kevin Durant. Uh, he might go 40-plus, and you got you just really need somebody from these role players to step up, whether it's Joe Harris or Jeff Green again, to really help out Kevin Durant and James Harden. And, and I think at home they can do it. You know, we've, we've yeah. been skeptical of them on the road, and, and certainly Durant dealing with that injury. Any chance Kyrie plays Game 7? I know it's a, it's a sprained ankle, but any yeah. chance he guts it out and, and – you know, pops a couple pills and, and is out there game seven. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, as much as, you know, as a Nets futures tickets holder, I want him <laughs> out there. <laughs> Even if it's for 15, 20 minutes, I just, just the way that he came down on the foot, I mean, it just looked really bad. And I think they already said they're prepared to be without him for the rest of this series. So, I mean, they got it done with a James Harden and Kevin Durant in game five at home. Yeah. Obviously, they got a lot of help out of Jeff Green, but we, we've we talked about on the NBA Gambling Podcast is role players really seem, seem to step up being at home. So, you know, look for those guys to really, you know, help. And I think this it's going to be balls to the walls for the Nets, and uh, I think they, they advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. Well, I mean, hopefully LeBron's prayers can uh, can get Kyrie recovered uh, <laughs> speedy because I do think they're going to need him. Uh, look, the, the, num- the numbers already moved to minus one and a half for the Nets. I, I think you guys oh, wow. are okay. on it. I mean, oh, wow. Well. They've been the bookmakers. I'm still giving myself credit at Brooklyn plus one. We watched the way that first quarter unfolded uh, for the Nets in the in the game five. And it was it was a comical joke. Yeah, and they still they still took care of business. They still won the game. And That's so, probably the best uh, example. How are you gonna? You know, Giannis played his his best game, uh, and and I just you know Middleton's not gonna put up thirty eight points again. And you know, to Munaf's point, maybe they saved a little bit once they realized this game was a little bit out of reach, and, and they're just gonna yeah. go full charge for Game Seven. Uh, L.A. New York probably helpful to have them around uh, for the NBA as well. So play the conspiracy music. You know, maybe they don't need Philly. Oh, they need Philly, Ryan. We all need Philly. I mean, we need Philly in a big way. Come on. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think you have to take the Nets in that one. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I know we had a tie on, and uh, you know, I, I did. We, what did we? Bucks and six. I okay, yeah, because I gave out Bucks plus five, one and yeah. a half. That cash. Nice work. Bucks over five and a half. There was probably some big juice on that. Um, you know, depending on what you got down on. So the, my series bets are clear and uh, to me, Brooklyn just, just gets it done. And I, I just can't imagine a world where Kevin Durant for Brooklyn at home loses that series. And there, it's not like there's been an amazing home court, uh, crowd for the nets, but it's, there's something yeah, fear those, those, uh, you know, hipsters of Brooklyn, I, I just storming the castle. <laughs> <laughs> will they will they dump a uh do they have like a gatorade a size bucket of cold brew that they're gonna dump on steve nash when they get to the championship craft beer <laughs> artisan handcrafted water vegan cheese vegan cheese <laughs> all right let's do it let's give out a uh a lock dog something spicy of course brought to you by prop America's favorite place to buy and sell sports futures. And again, if you've been riding the NBA future market, you could have, uh, you, you could really be making a killing because you look at, you know, teams like the Clippers looking so good and then looking so bad. I mean, it's a perfect time. If you had a Clippers uh, ticket to sell or on the other side, buy again, it's like the stock market, except for hashtag digits only. Best part is uh, you can use that promo code SGP on your first deposit. Receive up to $500 in bonus cash. I'm still sitting on my Sixers uh, to win it all uh, uh, future. I, so, I, I, so, <laughs> so. I don't know what I'd be able to get uh, for it right now. Probably not. Although they're favored. So, I, I, I mean, that's the crazy part is maybe I could get something uh, pretty decent for it. And, again, what's awesome about PropSwap is you can even bet – or buy tickets in game. So like the prices will adjust yeah. or if you see, you know, like let's say the Hawks get out to a yep. huge lead. 
And maybe you can try and sell and sell that adjusted spread ticket that you uh, that you heard on the sports <laughs> gambling podcast. I'm just hoping one of my uh, U.S. Open uh, outrights <laughs> make it interesting enough that maybe I maybe I pull a uh, hedge opportunity. Pull, this pull the trigger. So go to propswap.com promo code SGP for my lock. Man, I just do not see the Brooklyn Nets losing a game no. seven at home. Lock that up for my dog. I'll keep it simple. Give me the Clippers, even though it's a small dog, for something spicy. I'm going to say uh, Kevin Durant over 40 points. So whatever that, I mean, his probably over under sitting at like low 30s. Moon off, would you say? And then. Yeah. And then I'll uh, probably put around 35. Four and a half again. I, I think that uh, you, you'll you'll because they're at home in Game Seven. You'll see the superstars step up. So I'm guessing probably thirty three and a half, maybe. Okay, so adjusted. I'm gonna say he's gonna get over forty. So you Ooh. should be getting something pretty juicy there with okay. the odds. Make, making making your own lines up. I like it. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, again, <laughs> you can you can you can I, no, find you. that somewhere. You're trying to. I, you're following in my footsteps. I don't mind. Well, I've already I, paved the. The, pave player, the, way. the player props are not out, Ryan. Sean, you, we, trying to give actual investing advice to our clients. <laughs> I did the, the the math. Eight in a row, Sean. I've hit eight. Oh, adju- my God. Eight two to one oh adjusted spread bets in a row. Uh, David L. in the YouTube chat says, need Steve Nash to hug KD yeah. again before I, game I seven. I like that. Show your players your care. <laughs> unlike the Packers. Real assholes. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Leaving, leaving poor Aaron Rodgers. Out to drive. What's, what's your something spicy? Was it the prop? Yeah, it's KD it. over forty points. Moon That's off. spicy. What do you got? Lock, dog, and uh, something spicy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna uh, switch it up for my lock. I'm gonna take Philly first Ooh. half minus the two. Okay. Uh, yeah, first half know, seemed to be their thing. Yeah, right. Because you know, balls to the walls. Uh, it's elimination game for them, so I think they'll come out playing well. And like you said, second half they kind of poo poo on themselves. Um, for my dog, uh, I'm gonna say with Philly, I'll take their serious price at plus one forty five. I'm seeing Ooh. right now, um, they're favored for a reason in Game uh, Six here in Atlanta. If they get the job done there, there then you get a Game Seven at home. So lock up, or sorry, uh, that dog plus one forty five, and something spicy. Let me see here. Um, let's go with. It's got to be spicy, Moon Up. Extra spicy. Yeah. Here's a 14 to 1. Oh, um, hell yeah. Now that's spicy. I'll, okay, I'll give you the first one. Okay. Uh, 6 to 1. I'm going to say Ben Simmons records a triple double tomorrow. Oh, man. I, and God, God, then, God. He should hope so. Place your bets, please. <laughs> and then a 14 to 1. Joel B to have 35 or more points. Ben Simmons to have nine or more assists and Seth Curry to make four or more three pointers and a Philly win at 14 to one. Ooh. Okay. It's a lot of writing. I just got down there, but that is a, that is a nice. And again, if they win and cover that three, it could be in a game like this where, you know, those three guys are, are getting it done. So if you think they're going to get it done, you like them on the series, why not, you know, invest a little bit more and get that 14 to one Kramer. How about you? Lock dog, something spicy. Lock Brooklyn. Yeah. It's hard not to take Brooklyn here. Dog, I'm going to say wait till tomorrow because they're they're messing with the juice on these adjusted spreads, but uh, take the two to one. Wherever the two to one point, Atlanta minus uh, four and a half is what it is now. Not a ton of value there, but that's that's the play. And then, uh, yeah, something spicy. Let me pop this up. First play, or no, I'm sorry. Oh, it's a player parlay. Okay. I'm going to say that Paul George scores more than 31 points. Ooh. And the Clippers win. That's not that. Uh... Plus 300. Okay. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, what did he have? Um, do you know what he had this past game when they won? Uh, Paul I think, George. I think he was put up, what, 37. 35? 37, yeah. He's going to yeah. have another. I mean, it just, he's getting over the points. It's really just juicing up the, the Clippers' money line. Yeah. Oh man, we uh, it, it is almost the end of the uh, app contest, the NBA Finals free roll. So make sure you download the app, enter the contest for your chance to win one thousand dollars. Moon off. Uh, if you had to pick right now, team to win the NBA Finals, how many games? 
and how many points they do it in, or sorry, how many points are scored in the NBA finals. So nets and six, 1500 yeah. points. What would you be, uh, what would you be rolling with right now? And that is the contest yeah. again, download the app, get it in. Cause once the weekend hits, yeah. AKA Saturday, you're going to be out of luck. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I, I still think the Brooklyn nets are the favorite. I mean, you're going to eventually get Kyrie Irving back. Obviously. Yeah. They have to breed uh, Milwaukee in game seven, but I think, we're all in agreement that they get it done. Um, and then you should, you have your big three back. So uh, I'm going to stay with the nets to win the title. I think they get it done in ooh, six games and a total of 1,350 points scored. Ooh, I, I don't want to reveal. I'm looking at the current entries. By the way, huge overlay in this contest Massive, right now. Massive, because it's what? Free to free, free. It's actually an infinite overlay. <laughs> it's uh, Anything divided by zero is... Uh, I, I don't want to reveal what who has selected what right now. No, that would be... But what Moonoff said is a touch chalky. Ooh, I'll say that. Okay. Touch chalky. Well, you know. But then that he differentiates himself... I think his total points scored of uh, around thirteen hundred. I think is going to be for six games. Yeah, he did two twenty five. That's where that's how he came up with that number. Um, which you know that's a good, I mean, that's right where the total's been floating. And I would imagine, uh, uh, honestly, like I guess the concern would be if it is like Nets, Nets versus Utah. Holy shit! There could be a lot of points or Nets versus. Phoenix. Well, and, but that's what we kind of thought in this uh, Nets Bucks series, yeah. and it, no, just, I, it just didn't end up. I happening. like using two twenty five as kind of your your per game. Your bet. base. I your will base say country. I did see a guess of a couple hundred points. I think that might be incorrect. <laughs> they might have. Uh, they might have <laughs> read, read the uh, directions wrong. We have that a lot of a lot of times with our uh, listener contest. Guys, just clearly not <laughs> reading the entries. Hey, send us in a photo of your review, and then it's just a photo of them. Drinking Drinking a beer. Um, but yeah, again, and of course, Merch Monday, every Monday, we're uh, drawing reviews for nice. uh, free gear, giving away some hoodies, and the app reviews are up for grabs for uh, Merch Monday. So if you already reviewed the podcast, perfect time. Download the app, throw in a review there, and check out Moon Off on the NBA Gambling Podcast and on Twitter at SportsNerd824. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Bonus DGEN's only prop. First player to score in the Sixers-Hawks game, Seth Curry, plus 1,300. Kramer, let it ride.